Hello, I'm Jason with MathTutorDVD.com and today we're going to learn how to use the TI-89 to solve a system of equations, which means uh, when you have two or more algebraic equations. Uh, the good news is you already kind of know how to do this because if you go into the algebra menu here in the last section or two we've been talking about the solver that's built into uh, the TI-89 and we were using that to solve single equations. You type the equation in, put comma and then x if x is the uh, variable there and it will go and, and it'll, it'll solve uh, the systems of equations it'll solve the equation for whatever variable uh, you know you designate okay now uh, to to recap that if you're gonna solve a single equation just like what we've been doing uh, x plus 5 is equal to 4 comma x is telling the calculator to solve the single equation for the value of x so we hit enter and it's going to manipulate and subtract and it's going to tell you that the answer is x is equal to negative one now that's one single equation so you get one single solution that's that's what we have now in a system of equations uh... What you should know from your algebra you will at least have two equations uh... and so you'll have two equations and two unknowns and so what you're really doing is the calculators finding out what point or points in the xy plane are common to both of those equations. In other words, where do they intersect? Those are gonna, that's gonna be the point um, that we call the solution. So if we take a simple one here, we'll go up in here to the Algebra Solve menu, hit Enter. Uh, what you need to do is type in both of those equations. Now in the beginning here, I'm going to type in some sort of easy to read equations so that you can get the hang of what's going on, but you can type in as complicated of an equation as you can dream up here. So let's say we have a simple line, y is equal to x. And um, if you can think back, that line is a diagonal line that's kind of going up like this in the xy plane. Now we have to give it another, uh, another equation, the second equation. We don't use the comma. What you have to do here is go into the math menu, second function, down here to the math menu, go into the test menu, number 8. This is where all the greater than equal and stuff. Well, number 8 is the word and. So hit number 8, and it's going to put the word and. So this is the first equation. Uh, and then the second equation you just type in like you would think y is equal to and let's call it uh, 2 times x uh, plus 1 2 times x plus 1 so what we're going to have here actually what I'm really want to do instead of 2 times x I want to change it to 1 half x so we'll do 0 0.5 times x so I'm changing the slope, I'm making it a shallower slope. We're going to graph these in just a second to show you, but if you do that, you put both of the equations in there. If you had six equations, you'd have to put another and, and then the other equation, and the other equation, and the other equation. But since we only have two, we're going to put that there, we're going to put a comma. Now, just like in the other example, you do have to tell the TI what variable to solve for, but since this is a system of equations, you're going to want to solve for x and y, because you have two equations. So in order to put that, you have to open a curly brace. That's the second function over here. And then you need to put x, comma, y. And then you need to close the curly braces. And then finally close the parentheses. So that can be quite a bit to, to kind of wrap your brain around. But when you think about it, it's not, that, it's not that bad. Because all we did was we put the solve function up there. And then we put the first equation, y is equal to x. And then we put and the second equation whatever it happens to be and then you need to put both variables because those are the two variables you're going to solve for and assuming that these two equations do cross somewhere um, then that will be the solution and that'll be what it'll find so we hit enter and it tells us x is equal to 2 and y is equal to 2 that is the intersection point of, uh, of these two graphs so you could just write that down as your answer but because I'm trying to teach you a little something here let's go into the graph menu or actually let's go into the y equals menu and we're going to do entire sections on graphing but there's no reason not to just try now the first equation we have is y is equal to x so we can just put that in there and hit enter so y is equal to x the second equation is 0 0.5 times x plus 1 that's the second function so we got that done now that we have both functions in there in terms of y then we go ahead and hit second function and go over here to the graph and it will graph the two things that we have listed the two equations we've listed here's y is equal to x and here's the other line crossing through y is equal to one at a shallower slope and notice that they do intersect here so if I go in here and hit uh, uh, trace 
you can actually trace these functions and see where they intersect. But instead of doing that, oh, let's go ahead and zoom in. So we'll hit F2 for zoom. And we're going to talk about all of these later, but let's select zoom box for now. That's going to let us choose a rectangular region to zoom in on. So let's let's start over here so we get the axis here. We'll hit enter to make the first corner. We'll drag it down and we will literally um, drag a box across because we want to look at where these two graphs intersect because that's going to be the solution. So we hit enter and we'll zoom in on that region where they both cross. So here's the x-axis and the y-axis and here we are and we cross over here and once we're done up here F3 is trace so we'll go ahead and hit trace and we'll just go over here and look and without getting too technical this intersection point looks like it's you know right at 2 comma 2 now the reason it's not exact is because I'm skipping around on the pixels on the screen so it's just going to show me those values and I'll, I'm going to talk a lot more about the capability of the graphing in a little bit uh, in another section but you can pretty much see that the answer to the system where they intersect is x is equal to 2 y is equal to 2 now if I hit second function quit and get out of this and go back to the home screen like that then it, we can see that that equation or that series of equations is x is equal to 2 and y is equal to 2. So that's pretty cool. And you can put all kinds of equations in here. Let's do another one. We'll go up here uh, to the algebra menu and hit solve. Let's go ahead and put a nice, uh, you know, a nice quadratic equation in there. So we'll say x squared, something everybody can visualize. y is equal to x squared. Actually, we have to make it y equals because they have to be full-blown equations and then we don't put commas we have to put and so that's in the math menu number eight for test number eight for and so we're gonna have and now let's put a line here so this this parabola is gonna look something like this let me go ahead and draw a line that's gonna cut that parabola sort of in half so we'll say y is equal to two times x plus three and let's put a comma because that's our second equation actually I made a mistake instead of y it should be y equals like this 2x plus 3 after the comma go ahead and open your curly braces and you'll put x comma y because those are the two variables you're solving for close your braces close your parentheses hit enter it's gonna think about it for a minute and what's gonna happen is it's going it's going to give you two solutions x is equal to negative 1 comma 1 or let's go read the rest of it 3 comma 9. Now the reason it gives you two solutions is because this first equation is a parabola and the second equation is a line that cuts it in two places so you're going to have two two crossings where they intersect. So if we go over here uh, to the um, y equals menu let's change the first one just to learn about this one we'll enter we'll change it to x squared and on the second one we will change it to 2 times x plus 3 well, I'm going to hit enter first. 2 times x plus 3. And we'll hit enter. And then we'll go see what it graphs. We'll go to the graph menu. Now, notice it's going to use the same zoom factor that we used last time uh, because it's sort of what, what was last in the calculator. So let's go to the zoom menu, F2. And we're going to go down here to zoom standard, number 6. So we're going to zoom out to positive 10, negative 10, like this. So we're going to see our nice parabola, and then we're going to see our nice line cross that parabola in two places. And so if we go to the trace, F3, let's go look at the solution over here. And you could zoom in real tight and get real accurate here, but you can see that it's, it's basically going to be at negative 1, comma, uh, 1. If we zoomed in tight enough, you would see that that's what it would converge to. The reason it doesn't look exact is because the jagged nature of the pixels here. And then if we go off to the other guy, then the other guy is basically 3 comma uh, 9. You can sort of see what's happening up there. And if we quit out of that, we will see that that's exactly what the solution it gave us over here. Let's go up and scroll over. Negative 1 comma 1 or 3 comma 9. That's the exact solution. Uh, so that's really neat. And you can put, you know, six equations in here if you wanted and you get six solutions. But the deal is, is that really when you start getting to more complicated systems of equations, like with three equations or more, then it's going to be a lot easier to use matrices to solve them. So you'll learn about matrices in your algebra classes. The calculator can handle matrices. You just type the matrix in and press the button and out spits all seven solutions if you have seven equations. But for two equations or maybe even three equations, it's perfectly fine to use the solver here and it can do a good job. 
Now let me show you one more thing. Let me clear this out and go back to the algebra menu and go back to the solve. Let me go and give it two equations that don't intersect at all. And the easiest way to do that is to put two parallel lines. So there's a line. We go to the math menu and go to number 8 for test and number 8 for and. So put our second equation. For the second one, let's pick x plus 1. Now if you think back to your algebra, this line, y is equal to x, has a slope like this at 45 degrees. This guy has the same slope, 45 degrees, but it shifted up by 1. So it's going to be on top, but with the same slope. So if we hit a comma, and we go ahead and open this bracket, and put x comma y, and then close that bracket, close that parentheses, and hit enter, it's going to say false. The reason it's false is because these lines don't intersect. So if you put two equations in there that don't cross anywhere, you're going to get something like false. So one of these lines is, has a certain slope, the other one has the same slope, but it's just shifted up, so they never cross. So that's a good introduction to solving equations with the solver systems of equations. Put them in, put the variables that you need to solve for, let the calculator do its magic. If you have more than two equations, it's probably going to be easier to use the matrix solver. Uh, as far as typing in everything, it's going to be a lot easier. I'm Jason. I hope you've learned something in this section. Very powerful feature to check your work. Learn how to use it. You'll save a lot of time on your tests.